Apparently, as our economy changes, women will rise to the fore and replace men as the highest value workers. There was a female chief executive of a bank in Britain and she said to me the single most important skill was listening. Really listening so you can understand where somebody's coming from and get them to buy in on a decision. And she said, really, emotional skills are now as important as being able to read a balance sheet. Although women may like to think that there are some jobs that they can naturally do better, this simply isn't the case. In general, the only way women rise to the top in organisations is when they're put there artificially to fill a quota and avoid government sanction. And I think this world in which one lives, in front of the screen where all barriers have broken down, would also extend to that most happy of pastimes, which is retail therapy. And that little brown jacket, I think. Women are not replacing men in the workplace because they're better workers or because they're emotionally superior in some way. That would be equivalent to believing that replacing the England football team with women might lead to them lifting the World Cup again because women would play international football with more emotion. Instead, what's happening is that technology created by men is allowing lower quality and less capable workers in the shape of women to take a larger part in the workforce than would naturally be the case. As a consequence, higher value men are having to work harder to support this influx of women. Big business and government supports this because they want more people to be working and taxable and women are easier to manipulate and control than men. He will not work for the state, he will work for his wife and children, and his loyalty will go to his wife and children. Men are mavericks, men are a nuisance. Men unionise, women don't. If you're looking at a capitalist society, you want the fodder, which are the people who are going to do the work. As long as you employ women, you, you have a very malleable force, and you have a force that you can pay a lot less. As the women pour into the various jobs, including the legal profession, there are more women doctors, there's more women law lawyers, so on and so forth. What happens is that you get a very unbalanced society, but a very obedient society. Does this mean you think that the government would support feminism for these reasons? Tacitly. I don't think anybody sits down with a slide and rule and says this is what we're going to do. I think largely what happens is now there are sufficient powerful women in, for instance, the Labour Party to be virtually be allowed to do what they want to do. And finally, proof of what women have known for an awfully long time, men can't cope with colds. A survey has found that one in three men takes time off from work for colds compared to one in five women. Any man that works alongside women will know how ridiculous this sort of claim is. How often has she been late or away at the doctors for women's troubles? No, but she won't be in this afternoon. What? Why not? How much do you know about gynaecology? How often have you seen her crying instead of getting on with her work? You all right, Julie? Uh, you sure? Yeah. Tim, look after the desk. Come on, let's go and have a talk. Oh no, I can't, I've got to do some typing for Mr Bridges. Or perhaps you haven't even seen her for a year while she's been on maternity leave. Men are far more often at work than women are and are more useful to the employer and colleagues. But what can men say in the face of this sniping without belittling themselves? Look at this man caught in a crossfire. Fiona and I aren't saying anything about this at all because we don't no. want to be it's accused of men, men bashing. Men bashing. No, but they are, the, bless them, they are more sensitive souls and obviously that's mm. why they get uh, what we call man flu. Mm. It's Pneumonia, a cold. really. Yes. It's a responsible certainly. thing to do, not to come to work if you're poorly and infect everybody else. Yes, We're just showing of social not. responsibility. Well, no, you absolutely stay at home and make not. Everyone at home suffer. Mm. Just put the kettle on and be nice to us, just for a day. Just you put the kettle on. Did you, did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> Mm. 23 years, John Stapleton was saying earlier, not a day sick. Six years for me, not well, a day sick. That's because that Mrs Stapleton looks after him, as well as all the other things she's got to do. <laughs> just club me, just club me, get it over with. <laughs> Boom, that's fine. Whilst you'll get these women coming out with these nasty comments and cracks against men, no man really wants to get down in the gutter with her and start trading insults. So what men have tended to do over the decades is they've sat back and thought, well, if we just let it carry on, it will eventually go away. But unfortunately, it doesn't go away. It actually gets worse. Uh, indeed, uh, Doris Lessing, who's a sort of feminist icon, uh, wrote in The Observer a couple of three years ago, why are women doing this? Why are they demeaning men? And she actually said the most idiotic, ignorant woman can describe the, the nicest, kindest man in any way that she sees fit and nobody says anything. And she was a complete loss as to understand why. And she hadn't realised, she's in her 80s now. And 
she was um, she just couldn't understand why has feminism chosen to go down this route? So that's why so many of these men have their sheds at the bottom of the garden to go down to and, and find imaginary jobs to do, or they go down the pub to get out of it, you know. Uh, and I think the mass of men think, well, if we just ignore this, and, and if I just go straight to the sports page, I can ignore all the stuff in between. The media would have it that men are nothing without women, that we couldn't cope. <laughs> There's virtually nothing in the world that's not been conceived, created, designed and put together by men. I'd like to see a BBC series showing how women would get along living in a place where all of the products emanating from the work of men have been removed. An empty field. If every woman died tomorrow, men would invent artificial wombs and get on with things. If every man died tomorrow, civilization would begin to end when the first oil light came on. The only man every man can make. Men are portrayed as not being able to do so much as a load of washing. It is men that designed and built the machine. Men delivered it and installed it. And if it breaks down, men will fix it. Oh no! My washing machine! Can you fix it? And apparently, almost four out of ten women prefer shopping to sex. It's a trivial article, but it's typical of the thousands of articles written by media women over the years to devalue men. Women's magazines, I mean, I suddenly my daughter buys them and I saw a page there where it was basically encouraging women, paying women to write in to slag their old man off. Send a photograph of your old man in, write a page slagging him off and we'll give you 25 quid. And I held it to my daughters, what are you doing reading stuff like that Gemma, that's disgusting. And this persistent onslaught has successfully drummed negative attitudes towards men very deeply into the heads of women. This is one of the most hateful articles I've researched, and there are an awful lot of them. I cannot believe that a woman can write this and be published in a newspaper, in this case The Guardian. She wouldn't dare to say these things about any other group without severe legal consequences. I was at a Woman of the Year luncheon. Uh, it was held at the Savoy. And outside, and this is in the, the press cuttings, there were huge demonstration with banners, and on the banners it said, all men are bastards, all men are rapists. And I asked the police, I went down and said to the police, if that was black men or Jews, you'd arrest those women. But why don't you, re and they just look very uncomfortable. And one of them said, we're frightened of them. What's most ironic is that the very web page on which the story appears only exists due to the genius of men. If it were up to women, such hateful comments could only be scrawled in mud and thankfully washed away with the next rainfall. Why do we tolerate it? Why do men tolerate such abuse in what's so often described as a male-dominated society? Well, right now, I'm not sure there are any men out there who are actually capable of falling madly in love. A long time ago, I asked God to send me a decent man. I got Robert, Cedric, Daryl, and Kenneth. God's got some serious explaining to do. There are no good men. Now, now I, I read this article, and on average, there are two per state. There are plenty of good men. The vast majority of men are good men, many of whom are forced to deal with emotionally dysfunctional women. She's only a severely disturbed woman with a history of inadequacy and depression who lives on drugs and has suddenly realised she's facing a prison sentence. The large majority of popular films and series covers the full range of extreme criminal behaviour perpetrated exclusively by men. Men are near universally portrayed as evil rapists, murderers, thieves, abusers, and other assorted criminals. Men are serial rapists. Sky rape five women, two today. Men are sex slave trading paedophiles. The assumption is she was kidnapped by traffickers in the sex slave trade. She's 15, Jack. 15. Men beat their girlfriends. You ever fucking shut up? Never shut the fuck up, do you, Ruby? Men try and murder their wives. What are we gonna do? I don't know. I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Oh, guys like you always say you don't know what you're gonna do until you do it. I think you know exactly what you were gonna do. You were gonna kill your wife and child. Oh, yeah. Men can't even be trusted to give a woman a lift without attempting rape. I really need to go to Sony. Hey, my amor. Yo te llevo. Venga. Thank you. Y todo lo que tendría que hacer. Women seem to hold a very special place in our society. 
So special, in fact, that we fall over ourselves to notice and recognize women's achievements, even when those achievements really don't amount to much. My partner has been named the 33rd most powerful woman in Hollywood, and you think that I wouldn't care enough to send flowers? I'm hurt. Just checking. What time is the luncheon, by the way? I'd love to show up. Uh, no men allowed. So it's more of a rug munchin than a luncheon. This little lady is sharp. She went out and she found herself a man to partner up with and look what she was able to accomplish. Just like parents at their child's school play, we clap and cheer for women who really aren't very good. Take this example. What's this award about and why are women singled out for it? I've never seen a men's award for technology. Does this mean that there are so many great women in technology that they need recognition for all their fantastic ideas? Or is it because women are so backwards in technology that they need their own special Olympics to make themselves feel better? So how useful are women in technology? At two gigabytes each, these little powerhouses are ready for round one. And what's this woman's first priority in an MP3 player? Round one. Sexiness. They kind of look like little twins. The eye river is just so precious. It seems society is always ready to recognize women's lesser achievements and not so willing to point out men's greater achievements. Because women need to hear compliments all the time. Women need food, water, and compliments. That's right, women got to hear it all the time or they lose their mind.